It's middle of the year, we've played a ton of games, and these are the games we played the most. <laughs> Intro! In this video we're gonna talk about our most played games this year, so far. Do I have to play, talk about yours as well? Can I talk only about mine? In another room, yeah. <laughs> you can talk all you want in another room, but I'm Please. not present. Okay, yeah. We're gonna name a category and then both show our most played game in that certain category. And then after the video we will look at the comments and see your most played game in that category. First category is a heavy game. Heavy? Yeah. How many kilos at least does it have to have to be? Four? Four kilos, that's a very heavy game. That's Three, two, one! Too many bones. Whoa! Too many, too many, too many bones. Too many, that's enough. Would you say it's too many? Nah, it's not enough. Because it's an amazing game where uh, you play one of these creatures, characters, and try to defeat the uh, baddies. And yes, in this game, they are actually called the baddies. You can play solo, or you can play up to three, or even four players. But it all started for us with just this one little itty bitty big box. You set up a deck with the bad guys and events, go through these cards with events, fulfill them, mostly it's combat, moving on this map and try to destroy him. And you can destroy him by rolling a bunch of dice. It has so many dice. This is just one character's dice. The whole game is hiding in this thingy. Other side. Oh, other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Every player will play, play a unique character and upgrade that character to place dice there and unlock super special powers. Not just special powers, super special powers. Super. And then we have a board in the middle table where we'll move all our characters and the baddies will move. And yeah, like you said, we need to finish the encounter by mostly killing them. Then we'll upgrade, get some new stuff, move on to the next encounter. Nothing is more satisfying in this game than upgrading and getting new dice. No. This is the game. The most satisfying is rolling a bunch of dice. No, getting and upgrading them. Yes. Get, no. Getting them. No. If you don't get those dice, you can't roll anything. Any questions? No. No? Let's move on. Next category is... The most played Phila. Phila, Phila. I also have a prediction. We're gonna have at least two Star Wars games on this list. And zero Lord of the Rings games on this list. But I don't think we're gonna match anymore. None. So the filler that we have played the most is... Wait. Cluster. Crocodile. Cluster is a 10 minute game where each player has magnets. We have string in the middle of the table, which is our board, and all we have to do is take one of our magnets and place it in there without making any other magnets click together. If they do, I take them. That's bad because I want to get rid of my magnets. And once I do, I win. If I don't, I don't. Good. Crocodile is a game where you flick discs and you try to get into the center. But if there are opponent's discs on the table, you have to hit them first and try to knock them out. Whenever you're out of your discs, you count the points. And the more discs you have in the center, the better. And the first one to reach 100 points wins. Yes. And the other one is flicked. What he said. <laughs> it's just so addictive. You can go again and again and again and uh, the best dexterity game out there. Yeah, yeah, watch our ranking. Next one, Euro game. Euro, well, this is a tricky for me, but I'm gonna go with it anyway. Three, two, one. Through the ages. What? Oh, I'm counting the mobile app. Oh, well. That counts. Yeah, that it thing. counts. Playing online or web-based counts. I have Junipurium. Yeah, obviously. It's a Euro game, shut up. Dune Imperium is a game based on the Dune universe. Yeah, 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 that one. Where you have worker placement, deck building, you actually have type of area control battle system there, playing cards, sending agents, collecting resources, first one to get 10 victory points wins. In the new Dune Imperium you can play 3 versus 3, which I think is the best way to play that. Both of ours top 10 game of all time. For me it's through the ages, I counted this time the mobile app, I usually don't do that, but I thought it's a great story because I almost sold this game when I cleaned out my collection, but then I thought, you know what, I want to try it out again. Play the mobile app, then also play it in real life and really, really like it. It's a big commitment to play this because it's a civilization game that takes a lot of hours to play where you go from pyramids and old times to internet and almost modern times with tons of conflict tons of interaction playing it mobile versions much easier and quicker yet i still keep it in my collection and enjoy it it's interesting to show how quickly things change in board gaming anyway let's move on to the next category which is solo whoa, whoa, whoa. yes three two one Imperium Horizons. Oh, we matched again. 
Aha, your prediction is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Imperium Horizons is a deck building game, but very unique at that. You play a civilization that's very unique to other players and trying to find what makes yeah, it tick. Yeah, yeah. What's its thing? You wanna either upgrade enough or get all the glory and win the game, or you also could uh, make sure that there's enough riots that destroys everything, but you lose a bit less than other yeah. players. It is very complex and not intuitive. But it rewards you for uh, being stubborn and getting yeah. through it. Challenging game, just solving that deck is really great and it's unique game with each deck. That's why also playing it solo feels so, so good because the deck is like a living thing that's responsive to your actions. Yeah. It is great. I wouldn't recommend it though playing with four or maybe even three unless they know the game very well. There isn't a ton of interaction, no. so you're not losing with it's playing like... less players. Yeah. And not your turns, you just uh, pick up five cards and play these cards and some cards stay on the table and keep uh, giving you some benefits. Some cards, you just play it once and they give you some resources or some powers. It's a lot of different things. Each deck is very unique. Yeah. And that's why it's great in solo because every single time will be different when yeah. you play it. Even the same deck. To play a game. And here, my friends, two Star Wars games will clash. I'm calling it. Three, two, one. Door for Manta. What? Yeah, we finished the game. Star Screw Wars. your Star Wars. Wow. You can take that Star Wars and. Well, mine's actually a two-player game, but do tell what is Dorf Romantic. Dorf Romantic is a very simple game where on your turn you pick up a tile and you have to add it to the map. Like you, Carcassonne. Like Carcassonne, yet even simpler. Because you want to build these regions while fulfilling some tasks. For example, if you have a task to build four tile long forest. Yeah. You have to do just that. We played it with two people exclusively with my wife because it's just so relaxing. We had a little kiddo and we don't have what a lot What happened of... to it? He's now a bigger kiddo. We were tired and at the evenings this was a great game because you can think and try to maximize your turns or you can really calmly play it and just Relax. Well, mine's Star Wars Unlimited. Star Wars Unlimited is a dual game where uh, one person uh, fights the other and tries to destroy uh, each it's, other's bases. But this is also a collectible card game where you can buy boosters if you want to and build your own decks. It has great artwork, it has simple rules, it's quite engaging and you actually enjoyed it. Yeah, I actually enjoyed it. There are two unique things that we have to mention. I think number one is when you're fighting you can play your cards in a fight yeah. area and then also there's the ground area. Yeah. So you're fighting on two sides all the time as well as your cards are also your resources. Each turn you can play one card, play it down as a resource. I really like this game. And I think you'd even like it if you're not that into Star Wars, you're just not gonna get all the puns. Yeah. Or any puns. No puns, please. So that's my limited uh, overview of Star Wars Unlimited. So next category is the story slash campaign game. Oatsworn. Avatar. Oatsworn is a boss battler game where uh, you get stranded in a forest and then fight baddies. <laughs> Pretty much so. Each session is divided in two parts. There's the story part where you're wandering around the city and trying to solve things. And then there's like the actual boss fight. Cooperative game where all of you go against that boss. That boss will have trigger cards where you draw them and then see, okay, he does that and that. On your turns, you will have a few cards in your hand and play them out on the table and then uh, do different abilities. Each character is very unique. Very unique, yeah. The story is great and the combat is great. Yeah. It's a really great game. So mine's Avatar, The Last Airbender, Crossroads of Destiny. The award for the longest game name, name. of this video definitely goes to this. But it is a very simple family game. It's a storybook game where you have a book, you flip it open, see that's how far we've gotten, they have yeah. provide this little thing that's where you cool. can remember, yeah. And then there's gonna be a counter, it's almost like a boss battler, you'll have like enemies on the board where you track their life, some special rules, and it's a deck builder. Each player has their character and their little deck, and you're just trying to defeat the baddies, for the most part. There are some extra rules sometimes, each scenario takes you through a chapter of the cartoon. But essentially it's a very simple family game, which I have enjoyed with my kids. If you like Avatar and you have kids, I highly suggest this. The last one is Can't Get Enough. What this one, uh, we haven't played that much, as much as we wanted to, but uh, either we most likely will play it so much because we want to, or that game will just stay in our dreams yeah. as uh, we really, really want to play this. Three, two, one, Freelancers. 
Because I played just a little bit of it and had a blast, I wanna really, really play it a little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more. Basically, Freelancers is a story game through and through, where you with your friends go through this path and interact with different people, creatures, things, and it's super uh, humorous. It's very humorous. It's written in a way that it should be funny, and the it voice, is. The voiceover is amazing, so it feels relaxing yet super fun. I don't remember last time I laughed so loud uh, playing a board game, and I've just scratched the surface, played the uh, scenario. That's something that I keep reminding myself. Oh, I need to get this to my table. So. Maybe a review coming out. Maybe definitely. Maybe. Well, mine's another Dune game, another sci-fi game, but this one's actually not in space. This one's on a planet called. Arrakis. In this game, one player plays the Harkonnen and the other player plays the Atreides with the Fremen. And you're trying to score a certain amount of points. The first one to do that wins. And there are battles and there are card plays and there are characters, there are miniatures and it has combat and sandworms only within a span of two hours. It's maybe not as good as War of the Ring, but it's definitely shorter and easier to get to the table. Wanna play more? These were the games we the played way. the most this year. What were your games in these categories? Or maybe there's another category. Let us know in the comment section below, as well as become our uh, supporter, please. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to have time to play more games and then make more videos about that. Would be great. Would but be to do great. that, we need your help. You. We need you.